Okay, so it's kind of late at night. I'm out trash picking in a neighborhood where the uh, trash is getting picked up tomorrow. And uh, came down through here earlier and I saw this. And there's just no way for me to get this thing, unfortunately. It's, uh, let me see if I can get a shot of it. Hoping I can get a shot of it. See it right up, right up ahead right there? It's a, dude, it's a, it's a John Deere ride-on mower. One of the wheels is off, but it's a John Deere, man, and it's sitting right there. I have no way of getting it. I have no way of getting it. Oh, man, I'm so, I'm so freaking out. I would love to get that thing. I think I could fix it. The, one of the wheels, like I said, is off, but I've got nothing to get it onto. I've got no, you know, I've got... I would need a little tiny flatbed trailer, really, ideally. And I would need to know whether or not it can go in neutral. All right, so next day I wanted to see if this lawnmower is still there, and it looks like it is. So I'm gonna knock on the door, I think, and see if, uh, I don't know, I just wanna see the story on the thing, and see if they, would have any interest possibly in delivering it for a small fee because I don't have a way to get it home so I just want to check it out now what is this this is an AX95 can it go into neutral I wonder Going to neutral, I might be able to pull it. That's, that's neutral. Well, it might roll. They didn't answer the door, so I don't know. Yeah, the White House right here. <laughs> this is my neighbor helping me out, helping me get this thing here home. I can't believe he agreed to let me do this. I told him he's got to be just as crazy as I am. Uh, just yeah, as far forward as you can get it. I'm going to take it off up there. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Fun times. Okay, so I was able to bring this thing home as you just saw there. Uh, and just a look over it. Um, we do have the one wheel that was off the thing, which we already saw. We've got a missing little pad on that pedal, just right off the bat that I can see. The belt is off and shredded. We're going to need another belt. Um, hard to assess what's going on under the deck because I would have to jack the mower up a bit more. Uh, these tires I've already looked at. They're fairly dry rotted. This one has an old repair. Um, the bearing is still on down there. So I've still got the bearing. The, the beads on the tire though are kind of chewed up on the rim. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get this to seat back. And plus it's, it's also uh, pretty, pretty dry rotted as you can see there and it's got cracks so if I am able to use these tires at all it's gonna probably have to be with inner tubes um, I don't want to have to put those on so I'll probably take them somewhere to have them put on if I do that um, take them to a tire place or something oh the reason I had that tire set up here is because this has gone off the gas can the little bubble and you know what that means there's a 
there's a hole there so who knows how long this thing was sitting outside and it looks like maybe a while so uh, so so anyway there's that it came with no key but I've already ordered a key and it uh, these are universal so it does work it does not turn over so the battery's dead I have to hook up the battery charger to it okay so these tires are holding air but they are somewhat dry rotted they're not too bad though they are holding a they're holding air really well on these that one's flat too and it's dry rotted probably another case for a uh, inner tube I have not checked the, the motor yet to see if it's free probably pop this cover off and see if it's free We'll look inside the... Alright. Well, it's actually not too bad in here. The inside... The inside looks clean. You know, I say clean, there's a little bit of like maybe some residue or something down there. I don't know if you can see it or not, but... But it's not bad in there. It's not bad. So, you know... If we can get the motor to turn over, and if we can get a fresh battery charge on this thing, flush out the fuel system, uh, we should be all right with this. I, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, unless there's, you know, massive internal engine trouble. Um, these two different links they must be yeah they must be wrong one no uh, wait yes they are different slightly no, that's not that's not one to go all the way down at all I don't know what's, I'll have to sort that out later. I don't know what's up with that. Um, oil. Let's see. Um, it has oil. And it looks like it wasn't low or high. It's kind of in the middle, maybe. Maybe it is a bit low. And it's a bit black, but you expect that of some oil, especially old, something old like this. I mean, I'm encouraged, actually, overall. Um, so, I was missing the key, obviously, as I already mentioned. Also missing the the clip for the uh, to get the wheel back on. Um, I need to still order a belt for sure. The seat is pretty beaten up. And when I, then you can see it's still, still even now full of water. I've, I've had it tilted up like this for days trying to, trying to dry it out. But I might as well put it back down. See if the sun will get it nice and dry. I might try one of those, um, one of those crack repair kits. The, uh, the, the what you call it. I might try to to tape over those areas and use that plastic stuff on there. We'll see what I want to do there. I gotta do something there. It's pretty just wrecked. Um, but yeah, like I said, overall I'm pretty encouraged. Everything uh, does move up the, the mower deck. It's functional. No, I guess we can see a little bit, maybe under the deck. Can you see? really gonna be hard for me to tell what's up this is a um, mount for a bagger system that you can get separately it's an optional thing two giant baggers that come with a big uh, big thing that comes off and goes down here and attaches so there's a bagger system optional you can get for these um, 
but yeah, you know, like I said, I'm encouraged overall. It's all the levers are free. Um, I have not, I have not tried to move. Yeah, okay. So the transmission is. I mean, everything looks like it's hooked up there still, so no linkages are broken. Um, it's probably going to need some fuel line, I would imagine, especially after having the uh, having everything. And the fuel is not shut off. It doesn't look like. I think that's in the on position. There's a shut off valve right there, and it's it looks like it's in the on position. So, you know, fuel probably or water probably got into the carburetor too from that hole so we'll have to deal with that um, yeah like I said overall I'm encouraged and we will uh, get to work on this thing as soon as I can okay first thing I want to do is get that battery off of there while we're messing around with it and start getting it charging looks like it's not that old it says 2019 on it but that's, you know, still, I guess it is kind of old now, isn't it? So yeah, uh, February of 2019 is the date for this fire start. Is that a Walmart, or Everstart, excuse me, is that a Walmart brand? I'm gonna pop out these caps and uh, fill it with fill it with water and see if we can't bring this thing back to life. I don't know if you can see that, but those cells right there have <coughs> have water in there. So those are pretty good, and it looks like it's fairly high up, so I don't think I'll have to add very much. But I am going to go get some distilled water and fill it all the way up anyway. And if this thing doesn't work, I may try to uh, do some of the battery restore um, attempts like, they, uh, like you've seen on probably other channels. I think some of them use like baking soda to try to bring one back. We'll see how it goes. I don't know, man, those are, those are covered. Those are covered entirely. So all those are, are covered over uh, completely with, with water. I don't think I really have to add anything to those and I'm not gonna bother. Um, maybe we'll check it after it charges and, and add some after that, if and, you know, just in case anything boiled off. But uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think we're gonna have to do that right now. See what kind of charges left on it, if any. Hopefully, it's got something approaching 12 volts. Ooh, four and a half volts. Yeah, that's. That's pretty low. I don't know if we're going to be able to bring this thing back or not, but we will attempt it. Okay, so I had this idea. I was going to try to slowly charge this thing up, you know, not shock it to life. But um, we've got a problem. We're not, you can see here, we're not drawing any current. You know, even if I run it up to 12 volts or whatever, it's not drawing anything. It's not a, it's not a bad connection either. It's just not, it's nothing, man stone dead all right this isn't exactly the correct battery it is a 12 volt battery and I might be able to see if at least the thing turns over I have concerns about the fuel system anyway so I'm not really 
um, expecting it to fire. I just want to see if the engine cranks over. So let me see if I can get this battery on there. At least uh, temporarily enough to, to crank it. Okay, I don't know if this thing's going to have enough cranking amps to turn this over or start it or whatever, but we'll see what it does. It'll be interesting nonetheless, regardless. Let's see. What do I need to check first here? We got... This has to be down, is that right? I think I gotta be on it. Here's something going. You know what, it's acting like it's trying. I think what I want to do, see if the engine's even free. All right, so it's free, but I'm hearing some slurping noises, but the uh, that also the dipstick is off, and I need to replace that. I had to pull it out to get that cover off, so um, I'm not sure if it's coming from there or not. We've established that it's free. It needs a battery for sure. So I think the next thing to do would be to back my car up here and put the turn, I'm gonna jumper the terminals from my car battery and just see if I can get it to turn over with the key. I want to make sure there's not a dead short from positive to ground here. I was getting some spark, but I would expect a bigger spark if it was a dead short. We got 35 ohms. And it goes down to 1.4 with the key and start position. Even while off though it's 4.7k that seems 
Yeah, that shouldn't be right. Also, there's a fuse, and it is not blown. Without the fuse, it's open. Okay, now it's up to now it's up to two meg. Okay, this thing keeps jumping around. Keeps jumping around from like two mag reading to 4K. Okay, now it's, it should be 4.7K, but it jumps around when I, well, maybe it's not that. Maybe I was just moving the wire. Okay, well, Either we got a problem in the starter, uh, or there's a wiring issue, or I don't know. <laughs> could be could be just about anything. Probably a starter thing though. Connections maybe to the starter, something like that. We'll have to uh, take this whole outer shield off uh, the body off of there to get to the motor. We'll do that tomorrow. Okay, it's the next day and we're gonna get this up and off here so we can get a better look at the engine. Uh, to do this, we've got a couple of these brackets back here that bolt on. Uh, and then up here, they bolt on to the frame, or not the frame, excuse me, but the shell. And I do need to remove these because there's a, there's a metal plate in the way and I don't, this won't come off easily, I don't think. Unless that bolt right there is all that's holding it. I'm not even sure what the hell that is. Or what it's doing. I might be able to just remove that. Uh, yeah, let me put a socket on that I'll remove that. Also, the uh, gas tank is attached to this. Um, but it does have a shutoff valve right here and it is in the it's in the off position it says off okay so that's in the off position right there so I should be able to take this off and anything that's in the gas tank I can drain it off separately and flush out the tank uh, look at all the junk that's under here it's gonna be a fun one to clean up All right, let's get cracking on that. something intake side carburetors oh shit oh, it just broke get off of there mm. 
Cool. Looks like it's coming slowly. Slowly being the operative word there. Okay, there we go. Damn. Uh, yeah, man. Um, it's gasoline, but this it's got some water in it, too. I can tell just from what's on my hand because it's beading up. Yeah, man, there's little beads of water in it for sure. Okay, well, it looks like the fuel line goes down, dips down below the carb level. So it's possible that, you know, whatever came in here in, into the fuel tank, maybe it didn't make it to the carb. So hopefully, you know, the, the fuel line does dip down below the carb level. So yeah, there's water in that for sure. There's, there's gas, but there's also water. Okay, well, we're going to have our work cut out for us on this, but uh, first things first, we gotta, uh, we got to check out the starter um, problems and see what's going on. I can, I can finally at least see where the starter and the solenoid are, and they're up in here. Yeah, you see the starter and the uh, solenoid up in there, so at least I know now where they are on this machine I went ahead and downloaded the manual for the um, for the motor as well so we'll have something to go by I cracked the fiberglass body I'm trying to get this thing off here see that I cracked that so I've got to be careful this whole, this this whole piece is fiberglass So the wiring is holding this, obviously. Get that off there. Okay. And then I've got this lever down here. I'm not even really sure yet what this lever is. Uh, I think it's a. I think it's a safety thing. Yeah. I don't know. I have to check it out. What it is. But it's a. Uh, Definitely, it's got to come out around that somehow, so I don't even know. Somebody has definitely had this thing off before because there are a couple of bolts. Uh, there's one here, and then there's another one on this side under here, right there. And they bolt to the frame, and... Uh, those were already the nuts were already off of those you really it obviously doesn't need them to be there um so somebody had taken this off probably before the shell and left uh left those out which is fine by me and to their credit they managed to do without cracking the damn thing like i just did I think this has to come off as well. I'm pretty sure it does. Yeah, this is a truly stupid design. It uh this the the seat bottom right there. Okay, that is attached to the frame right there on that hinge and not the uh, fiberglass shell, obviously. But the problem is, the seat bottom is in the way. It's in the way of the tank, the gas tank. 
gas tank actually extends over so you can't you can't get the shell off easily <laughs> and I'm just tearing this the more I try to get this off of here I'm just tearing it up I'm actually cracking the fiberglass cracked it one two times already and I'm scratching it all up as well man it's got to come off of here though I don't know what else I can do it's gonna keep trying Okay, so that hinge pin, it has to be threaded right through there. Let me get this back together. That was not fun, like at all, but it's off there now. I think getting it back together is gonna be harder than getting it off because I'm gonna have to remember exactly which order it all goes in. I think obviously before we do anything else, I hate working in filth. I'm the same way in the kitchen. You know, if I'm gonna cook, I hate trying to cook in filth so I have to clean up before I do. Uh, I don't know if you guys are like that or not, but I'm gonna definitely blow this out before I do anything else. Let's get a look at the underside of that. I'm kinda curious. Yeah, it's a shame I cracked that. What I might do is get some fiberglass uh, repair and uh, repair the underside of that crack with some fiberglass repair kit. Some of the liquid stuff. Oh, the fuel. I forgot about the fuel. It's going to dump out whatever's in there. We might as well go ahead and drain that first. Honestly, I was expecting a lot worse than that. I was expecting it to be filled with trash and, you know, really brown and all that, but it's not. It's not bad. All right, just as a point of reference, uh, this is what we are getting out of the tank, and this is what fresh gasoline looks like. So you can see the difference in color. You know, should, the fresh gas should not be piss yellow like this. Um, it gets this way as it ages. What I'll probably do is recycle this into my larger um, gasoline tank and just run it through my machines, uh, diluted, you know, put it in about five, six gallons of other gas and just run it through like that. Cause you know, I don't want to try to dispose this down any drains or, you know, and I'm not trying to create some kind of environmental mess around here. I just want to uh, burn it up if I can. So, and I'm not seeing any water in it. So that's the plus. I, I can't believe it. I'm actually quite shocked that there's no water in this gasoline. So there's a bit more in the tank because the tank's tilted at an angle. So we'll get all of it out. And like I said, I'm going to cycle this into uh, my larger can and just burn it up that way, I think.
Yeah, something sure looks a lot less worthy of being thrown away once it's had a good clean. Gotta be careful with that roofing now. This looks like somebody did some roofing with this underneath it at some point. Blow that all over my driveway, that'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? But yeah, it looks much, much better now. I may have to go ahead and take the water hose to it too while it's, right, while it's in this state. Uh, as a matter of fact, that is what I'm gonna do here in just a second. I wanna get a good look around it though. So yeah, the starter, starter and solenoid pack, okay, right here. Starter, and there's the solenoid. Uh, I believe I was hearing the solenoid click when uh, earlier. Um, so that's likely okay. But to make sure, I, I do want to measure it uh, and check the specs against what the manual calls for, calls for. So, but yeah, man, everything's looking much, much better. And while I have everything apart too, I'm going to lube everything. All these levers, um, all this crap is going to get lubricated. So we'll get her going. This is going to take a, probably a little while because I'm only doing this a little bit at a time. It looks like. Looks like it might, might try to rain on us tonight or tomorrow. I don't, I don't know. I'll have to look at the weather report and see. But uh, if if it's gonna, I'll have to do something to cover that up. I don't want it out in the rain necessarily. But uh, yeah. So the oil drain. Okay. <clears throat> this is. This is the oil drain right here. Somebody, I don't, I don't know if this is factory. Um, I do know that some of these don't even have this hose that comes down when it's easy, easily accessible like this. Uh, a lot of these, and, and owners were complaining about it, the uh, valve was way up here and they had to run a, like a really thin funnel all the way up here. Otherwise they would have had to do what I did and take this whole thing apart just to change the oil. So it was a really stupid, stupid design. There's a lot of stupid stuff on this, I'll be honest, design-wise. Clean those contacts on that. That has something to do with the starter system. I'm not sure exactly what that is. It's the, um, I, I forget what they call that. That little guy right there. But it's part of the starter system. I'm gonna spray, spray all these contacts and the, with cleaner, all these with cleaner. Uh, but yeah. Next steps is to get in here and figure out why the starter is not turning over. Um, and to fully test it, I think I'm gonna remove it from the engine. I think that's probably the best approach here. Just go ahead and remove it entirely. But, uh, but yeah, I think first I'm gonna go ahead and give this whole thing a good bath.
Okay, that's better. I feel a little bit better about that. Okay, we're gonna do some measurements and test the starter solenoid, and I've got my car battery hooked up to the terminals. Um, I want to check for voltage at the solenoid first. So we'll do that. Right, so between here and here, we're open at the moment. Okay, we've got our 12 volts. Seeing, we're seeing our 12 volts right there, so we know that it's getting voltage. I don't know, man. That's a bit. It's looking a bit crusty. That connection. Okay, I have uh, already sprayed just about every contact in the entire electrical system. So if something, if something isn't working now, then it's a, probably a bad part. Um, but let's see, I wanna turn the key and I wanna see what the meter reads here. Hang on one second. It's starting to look like we probably have a bad solenoid. I'm gonna pull the solenoid off of there and we'll get a closer look at it. Well, the connection on this thing looks really corroded. So I'm thinking maybe take it off and clean the connection and we'll see, what, uh, see how that goes. Okay, so you can sort of see, see how the starter works here. Um, so what happens over here is the, solen the solenoid pushes up the starter onto the teeth. Uh,
And what I think is going on, maybe, is that I think possibly the starter might be seized up. So what we'll do, um, I mean, the solenoid wasn't clicking at all, though. So, I, you know, I don't know. It seems like the solenoid might be the problem. But we're going to take the starter off. We'll test the whole thing. Uh, we'll have to do it inside because we're about to get rained on here. So I'm going to cover this back up for tonight, and then we'll, uh, we'll leave it as is. We'll get the cover back on this tonight and leave it as is. We're about to get rained on here in a few minutes, so. You can sort of see what I mean, though, about the water that got in. You see it staining in the bottom there. The reason it got in is because I think somebody broke the bolt off on this side at one point, and now the, maybe they replaced the bolt, and the new bolt has the full length, and it's buttoned up against the piece of the old bolt. So I'm gonna have to cut off the old bolt to get this to seal up. Which add it to the list.